Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. For today I have a brand new action camera called the L3 that costs under $80 and it has a touch screen on the back. So that's right, the 2.45 inches display on the back of this camera, it's also a touch screen. So just like we've seen on the GoPro 5 or the SJ Cam SJ7 Star. Now, keep in mind that in order to get this camera for $77, you actually have to use a coupon code and uh, you can find that in the video's description and I'm not sure for how long that um, coupon code will work and it's only available for Amazon.com. So if you're in Canada, you're not going to be able to get this um, for that price. Let's start with a very quick unboxing. So this comes in a good looking box, on the front we see the waterproof case and the camera and turning the box on one side we can see whatever accessories we have in the box and on the back you're going to see some of the specifications. The manufacturer suggests that the waterproof case is good to up to 30 meters in the water but as always I haven't actually been swimming with this so I can't really say if that's true or not, however I did have this in the water and there was no water going in. The back of the waterproof case can also be replaced with another one that allows you to access the touchscreen functions on the camera so that could be useful if you're um, planning to take this diving. And moving back to the box, you're also going to find the user manual. The user manual is in a whole bunch of languages and it's got some pictures and instructions. So if this is your first action camera, it could be useful. Aside from that, you're going to find the second 1000 mAh battery. So this camera comes with two batteries in the box. And leaving those aside, you're going to find a whole bunch of stickers, mounts, straps and so on. So you can basically place the camera anywhere. If you want to place it on a tripod, you can do that. If you want to place it on a bicycle, you can also do that on a helmet and so on. For specifications, we have the Novatec 9660 CPU, we also have the Sony IMX078 image sensor with a field of view of 170 degrees. Now, keep in mind that that processor doesn't support 4K recording, so even though you can select 4K at 24 frames per second, you are actually recording in 2K and that's an interpolated recording to 4K. So this doesn't actually support 4K recordings. This camera has a couple of features worth mentioning. So the first one would be the ability to control this camera over Wi-Fi. So the camera can make a Wi-Fi network, you connect to that Wi-Fi network with your smartphone and you can control the camera right from your smartphone and this works good up to like 8-10 meters away from the camera. You will have to install an app on your smartphone in order to control the camera but you can find that app in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And once you have that installed you can change the resolution, you can start recording, you can see whatever you have saved on the camera and so on. The second important feature would be the image stabilization and that can also be used at any resolution so it doesn't matter if you're recording in 4K or 1080p, you can use it at all times. So now I want to show you some samples with the stabilization on and the stabilization off. And as you've seen for yourself, the stabilization works quite good. Next, I want to show you some samples um, that I recorded with the microphone. So let's check those out. This is our first microphone test. I'm holding the camera in my hand and I'm also outside, as you can probably see. I believe I'm recording in 4K, 24 frames per second. And it is a bit windy, but not uh, too much. So this is how the microphone sounds. For our second microphone test, um, I'm biking, as you can probably see. I'm recording in 4K, 24 frames per second and uh, I'm talking behind the camera so it is quite uh, windy while I'm uh, biking here so this is how the microphone sounds under these conditions so even though the microphone doesn't sound too bad we had other cameras in the past that were um, a bit better now let's check out the camera itself so the entire camera it's made out of plastic but that's not necessarily a bad thing and I'm not sure if you noticed but the camera it's a bit longer than all the other cameras that we've seen and that's mostly because of that screen that we have on the back on the front we have a small LED that cannot be turned off, we also have the lens and what could potentially be a microphone. On top we have the speaker, we have the OK and the recording button and there is also an LED in that uh, plastic button there. And moving on to the left hand side of the camera there we have a micro USB charging port and the HDMI port. Now keep in mind that you are not going to be able to use an external microphone with this camera so you are going to be limited to the internal microphone that we have inside this. Now the camera can be used while charging so you can connect this to a power bank for example and continue recording and this camera can also be used as a dash cam because we have a dash mode in there as well. Moving to the bottom of the camera there we have a quarter inch screw thread and that makes it very easy to use this on a tripod or anything like that and we also have a plastic door that lets you access the 1000 mAh battery and the SD card. 
The camera takes SD cards up to 64 gigs and I've been using the same uh, cheap SD card that I've been using with a lot of uh, other action cameras in the past and this one works great. As for the battery life, well it's not as good as other action cameras that we've seen in the past and that's mostly because of the bigger screen that we have on the back um, of the camera and that definitely sucks more power. So you're still gonna be able to get around 35 to 40 minutes of recording in uh, 4K and about an hour and 10 minutes of recording at 1080p. And we are moving to the main selling point of this action camera, the 2.45 inches touchscreen on the back of the camera. So the touchscreen is better than all the other touchscreens that we've seen for previous action cameras from China. And the viewing angles are also better, so you can actually see this no matter how you look at it. And it kind of gets bright enough so you can see it outside. Having a touchscreen on the back also makes operating the camera much easier and faster than all the other action cameras that we've seen in the past and this is definitely a great addition. Now don't imagine that the touch sensitivity is gonna be as good as um, you'd find on a smartphone but it's decent enough to control a camera. And now it's time to check out some daytime video recording. So I have some 4K files and some uh, 1080p files and we'll start with the 4K files. Hello everyone, this is our second or third microphone test. Um, right now I'm recording in 4K 24 frames per second. I also have the gyro stabilization on, but this is how the microphone sounds under um, these conditions. And as you've seen, they are not bad for a camera that costs under $80, however, they are far from the best that we've seen here on the channel. Well, I can't say the same about nighttime recordings, so the nighttime recordings are kind of bad, I mean really bad. So let's check out some nighttime recordings. And as you've seen, nighttime recordings don't look good at all. So this is definitely a daytime camera. So don't imagine they're gonna record anything at night. Now, this camera can also take pictures and the, the picture quality is much better than the video quality, in my opinion, mostly if you have plenty of light. As soon as you don't have light, you're better off not to take any pictures because you can't really see anything if you don't have um, plenty of light. And of course, the pictures that you've just seen are actually taken with this camera. This camera can also do time lapses and you don't actually have to stitch the pictures together. You can just uh, press a button and then the time lapse um, will be done. However, you can only choose um, a 1080p resolution for time lapses and this uh, um, very short time lapse was done with this camera. Switching in between the video recording mode or the picture recording mode, it's very simple. You basically swipe left or right, and each mode has its own uh, settings section. For settings, even though we don't have as many settings as we've seen for other um, action cameras in the past, mostly the ones that um, can record in real 4K, however, you do have all the options that um, we've seen in the past. So you can turn the gyro stabilization on or off, you can turn the HDR mode on or off, and the camera also has a whole bunch of languages that you can choose from. 
But realistically, all you have to do is go through those menus and basically modify whatever you may think that um, you may need. So it's very simple to do. And as I said, this is um, one of the best implementations uh, for a touch screen on an action camera. And it's time to conclude this video. So I love the touch screen on the back of this camera. It makes the camera so much easier to use compared to all the other action cameras that I've tried, but I was quite disappointed about the nighttime recordings. And that is basically the downside to this camera. So I'm gonna let you guys decide if this camera is worth 80 bucks or not. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.